Hello, this is Angela from Warp Weft. When I was making this page, I'd said I'd follow it up with another video of what I'm going to do with the other side of it. So I'll just take these out and turn the page over. So I've already covered this in gesso because I wanted to do the wet stuff before I finished and put the dry stuff on that side. So this has one layer of gesso on it and it's a rough layer. I thought I might leave this fairly pale in contrast to what's on the back. And I've got this little dotty paper or dotty card, pink dotty card um, branch, and I'm going to put some little flowers on this side. Now on the other side, we did pockets along the bottom. I don't want to do the same thing on this side. So what I thought I might do is make an envelope on here that can open up and then um, I can decorate the whole page, including the envelope. So I'm going to make the envelope out of this. I don't know if how well you can see that, but it's kind of like a, a pearlized paper um, and it's kind of a loopy, 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 loopy pattern on it. And it's off white. So I've cut it to about six inches, which is about 15 centimeters. It is just slightly wider than my page and yes it is going to sit on this page and not onto that page but there's a reason why I've cut it this wide. So I'm just going to fold it into an envelope. I want to maximize my space so I'm just going to fold it up and if I measure that I'll just measure that for you. So I folded up about four inches and then I'm going to fold this one down so that it just covers. Now even though I did this on the guillotine somehow I've managed to not cut it completely straight so I will just trim that edge off. All right now I'm going to put it that way so I don't need to worry about being too fancy with the envelope part on this side. I'm just going to trim off a little bit. I'm not even going to worry that they're the same because that pretty much is going to fold down. You know what? I'll be good. I will check that it's the same. So you just fold that. It's probably easier to fold it in than out. Check that those two. Oh, wow. They are the same. How good was that? Okay, so that's going to fold up there. Now, the reason that I had this wider was because I was then going to fold in the sides. So if I fold in the sides here, and then I do the same to that side, I now have myself a squarish pocket. That's what happens when you eyeball things. They're not always exact. Okay, so when I open that out, I can see that I need to cut this a bit better. So that's going to go there. So they are going to go inside like that. those bits okay so I'm going to now cut off these parts here and I'll just give that a little angle there and I'm going to cut all the way down here so I'm just going to cut off those beautiful angles that I did turned out to be a waste of time and I'll do the same on the other side just angle it slightly and then cut down the side along the fold put those bits aside 
could be using for something later on. Now I'm just going to fold this to make sure that it is it is folding nice and straight and on the line. Okay, so I'm going to fold that up to there. And that's going to come down there, so I want to angle this again. Let's do it both sides at the same time. So that's going to be on that side. So I've got a little bit hanging over there. I don't really. Where was that hanging? Actually, if I glue it like that, it won't hang. And that has to go up there like that so we can tuck something in there. Or like that. So that flips out. But if we do it this way, we can glue things on it, and then when we lift it up, it's not going to matter. Just have to be careful how we glue them. So I'm going to go this way, I think. All right. Let's get gluing. worried that there's gaps there because this is just going to go here you're not going to see that bit and that flips up then that will give you plenty of room to put whatever you want under there just make sure that they're nicely stuck all right so I'm going to move it up because I'd like to keep a little kind of flippy things that holds it down so actually we might put something across the corner and then we can just slide it out worry about that in a minute I'm just going to glue the back of this down it up a little bit to there and I know what I'm going to put under there I'm just going to put it's not heavy enough actually no, I don't think I'll use that okay so I've got this on of course I haven't got it straight have I luckily the glue hasn't dried okay there we go straight now, if I put that there and glue it on there, when that comes up, that will bend. So that's all right. I can do that. I can put my little flowers on there and we're part way done. All right, let's go ahead and glue those on. I'd say this must have been some sort of box that I cut these out of because there's some words there. I didn't think I had any paper like this. And this was actually card. over and I want it just pull it so that that leaf doesn't have to bend I'm 
unfortunately that leaf is going to have to bend so I'm just going to score it with my nail a little bit and that one there okay so I've got a little score there this might be a good thing to score it a bit more heavily with so that it will bend nicely when I lift it up so that needs a bit more glue there and we'll glue the flowers on I did tell you I was going to show you how I made these which I will in a second Now they're nicely sticking up at the moment but in a journal they're going to squish reasonably flat so I need to make sure that they can squash a little bit. You're not going to cause any folds on the underneath layers. Okay so we've got that far. Now so to make these little flowers here, you need some of this kind of paper. So this says it's a sketchbook, but it's more like watercolour paper or a very thick cartridge paper. Um, and it really does bend quite well. So that's what I'm using um, for my paper. I'm using a Kazaz punch and I just punch out do a couple of these at a time a few of these you see I always take the back off mine it drives me mad, mad having to keep opening it and take the piece out so I take the backs off of my punches okay put that aside and I'll put this aside as well and I'm going to put a bit of black paper and cardboard under that so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better so you need something to ball these up on and just wad up a piece of this if you don't have a like a an old mouse pad you can just use a wad of fabric soft fabric just put it on the piece of fabric and then use the end of a paintbrush such as this or something that has a similar kind of end to it and you just drag the end in just round those off a little bit so if you drag them in they'll go pointy if you round them they'll stay round and then ball the middle so that they come up quite rounded they'll flatten out in the course of what we're doing so I'll just do this one as well I'll do this one round and then I'll show you a pointy one so just cup those and then cup the center so that the petals come up. And this one I'll do, because it's got slight point on it, it's really good for doing that kind of thing. So I'll just drag that one in. See, that one's more pointy like that. And you get like a pointy end to your flower. And then you can just ball it the same way and then spread it out as much as you want. So the next bit that I do on these is a little bit of watercolour. So I've got some, made some pink here. So it's probably a bit darker than the other pink. Just add a bit more white until you get pink, the pink that you want, and just lightly put some on. If you want it slightly lighter or more watery effect, you can just put it on and then damp it off and just put it on the end you don't need it all over I'm just going to take this off a little bit I took it off too much there didn't I okay wants to stay all right so this was the roundy one sorry the pointy one and it has kind of unraveled itself a little bit you can 
ball it back up again after you've tinted it if you want or you can tint it first and then ball it it's up to you but I just find if I ball them first then the watercolor goes into the ball which is kind of what I want and then stays lighter on the edge hopefully dries fairly quickly it will get lighter as you go around from there soaks in very very quickly so if you just want to you can wash your brush off and just wet the edge a little bit if you want just put a tiny bit more into that wet just to soften the edge a little bit that's a little bit hard there a little bit more color into that Water. Okay, just leave them dry. You can bring it right the way down if you want to. It's up to you. I've, I've only done the tips on that one. I'll have a go at this one. I might wet this one first, and you can see what happens with a lot more when if the petals are already wet when you do it. So lots of different ways to get the effects that you want. Just dab a little bit of color into that wetness so three different ways to color those now to get the middles going I'm using some liquid pearls this is just a bisque um, pearlescent one and you just squeeze a little bit in the middle there and I don't like it when it comes up into a point there try and get that knock that point down a bit nope just made it worse all right we'll see what we can do to flatten that in a minute trick is to stop before you come up I think we we'll use a bit of a paintbrush here all right so it's just going to go into a little ball and then I wash that so I don't ruin that brush just leave them to dry they don't take long um, maybe half an hour for those little balls to dry so to hold the envelope down I'm going to use a piece of lace so I've just pulled this lace out and I will just cut it a little bit bigger than I want and I can trim it down later that away right I'm just going to put a piece of a bit of glue this side glue that down and then make sure this overhangs this end here fair bit of glue on or use hot glue I'm not using hot glue I'm just going to pull this reasonably tight and hold it down while it dries in fact I'll use my trusty weights on those to hold that down while it dries and while I think about what else I'm going to decorate this with my glue is now dry so I'm just going to trim off the ends of this lace hopeless pair of scissors these are need to sharpen them here we go Oh, 
put together some bits and pieces that I want to use to finish this page. So I want to put something on this side here that is also going to allow for some writing because this is supposed to be a journal. So I'm going to make a little booklet. So I folded a piece of paper so that I've got one side larger than the other so that when it folds over it's more or less in the center this is the whole width of an a4 page and it is a pearlized peachy color so i'm going to nip out the corners of this and the reason that i'm going to do that which i'll show you in a second is because it makes it easier to get a good tight tie for the pages now what the page this booklet itself won't be removable but the pages will be so wh whoever is using this book can then slide the pages out and use them so I've cut my piece of paper so that my pieces of paper for inside so that they are within where that crack there is and where this crack here is so that you can slide them in and out but these little notches in here will hold the string a little bit better so I'm actually going to use string cut myself some string here to tie it in with this tends to grab a little bit better than slippery ribbon or braid cord whatever so I'm going to use this. It mixes in with my colour scheme. Let's cut a rough bit off. Tie it. Tie it around there. I'm going to do a double knot just to make sure it doesn't come undone. And then I can do a little bow. That up. Pull that tight. Right, that's one side. And then I'll do the same to the other side. What you can do with these, and if I can grab a pin, I will show you a good way of keep getting a nice tight knot. Just use a dressmaker's pin, and when you've got that together, slide the dressmaker's pin through both pieces. That should hold them together, and then you can tie it together like that. Just remove the pin. I can do a nice bow on that. Should have done that on the other side. I might undo it and do that technique on the other side. Like this. Okay. Cut that off. Cut that off. Let's undo this one. No, I can't because I've already tied it in a knot. Okay. Never mind. Let's just do it back up. Slide it back. And tighten it so now we've got the paper inside but as you can see it's quite easy to slide in and out and if you wanted to put more pages in you could so this is going to be actually that way around and it's going to go on here so this is going to go across here like this so I'm going to glue on that side and then this will tuck in underneath there like that. And that'll be the closure. So I'm just going to do that. I'll glue down this edge. And just down the center. That. Just that slightly. There we go. And on this side, I am going to glue down here just a little piece of 
contrast. along the edge just to give it a little bit of interest and just better if I do it this side cut that piece off the end and now this closes having done that I can glue this on the page. I'm going to glue it down to the wards of the bottom and I'm only going to glue along three edges so that we also get a tuck behind it that can be a little hidey hole. Just along the edges. Doesn't matter if it doesn't go right to the edge. I'm not particularly worried because it is fairly rounded. Long straight. Make sure I haven't put the glue up too far on that, so I'll just let that dry the way it is. Pop that under. Okay, so when that dries, it'll have a tuck behind it. Now I'm also going to do a kind of conceal with this where I'm going to put this, I want to put angle this so that and I'll just make sure I've got the right side there yes I have so that it goes over the corner of the page the picture sorry and then I'll put this piece of lace so that it appears to still be joined so I'm just going to put some glue on the back of that And glue that so that the it overlaps and the little edge is there. Now I'll glue this one. I can tell this is the back, it's more ragged than the other side. These were off-white and I have just dyed them with some of the same dye that I used on the paper. Just sprayed them and let them dry. So I want that looking like it's joining up. Just press that down. Not that that's going to stay very flat because it's got paper inside it, but and as always, I've managed to get a bit of glue or something on the end there. Okay, so now I'm going to use this little piece that was white. I've used the same dye on it so that it, it matches up and I'm just going to pop it into this corner here. I just Technically, they're not the same kind of lace, but who's to know? So then I, I found this. I had this bit hanging around for a while, so I thought, okay, well, I might put it there. I might do it at an angle. She might do it that way. And then 
put my little mo my little saying right there now i want to give that a little bit of a pop so i'm just going to ink around the edge of that And in fact, you know what? It would look nicer just a tad bigger. So I'm going to stick this on another piece of cardboard, I think, make it slightly bigger. So I'm just going to find a scrap. I use the same paper that I used on the other side. So I'll just cut off. I don't know if that's going to be big enough now. Let's have a go. Yes, it is. So I'm just going to stick that on there. It's a nice bit of paper there actually, nicely mottled and just trim around and then that's just big enough to go over that. So I want that at an angle because I don't want it completely covering my lace. Where's the center of the... Okay. No, nope, don't think I'm going to use that because I think that just is too big. You know what I've done? I have glued that over there and now I can't open the book. I can't open this. Ah. You know what? That needs to go on that side. And this is what I mean about watching my craft mistakes and all. So is just put it on this side glue that down again that'll come up now that's will rub off hopefully okay so that's rubbed off there but we're still going to have a bit on there so guess what i think we might put Now that's going to be too big. Let me just put that there instead. All right. Just tip it up a little bit so that it can be seen. Around the right way. And we'll just pop that there. Bring that down a little bit so I'm not covering. Okay, there we go. Now it opens. And I can still feel some glue on that. But it's rubbing off well. Yes, I do have a glue rubber, but I find it tends to lift the surface. So this is still wet enough for me to just rub it off. And...
just a little bit along there. Don't scratch too hard, Angela. Okay, it's gone. Good. All right, fixed. No need to panic. Now that's slightly bent, so I'll open it up. Just crease it down a bit. That's better. Now we've got an empty spot there. What are we going to put in it? Hmm. Okay, let's do this side first. So I have this card which I'm going to mount on there. I did think about maybe making it a tuck and putting this down here so that we can slide this in and out. Let's have another look. Can I do that? I don't think this is really sturdy enough to do that. So the choice is either put some cardboard on the back of that or don't use that. Maybe we'll just put that there. And this is fairly thick cardboard. If I put that there and put my dragonfly down there, which means I've got to do his wings or her wings and body. Make sure none of that. And I've got the little thing there. Oh, we put that there with the butterfly on it. I think so. We might just tip it up at an angle. And then I can put the butterfly in the space there. Okay. So I've come up with something. Got a new die arrived in the mail today. This is going to be too big, but if I snip off part of it and put it up here like that. Let me put some glue on that. Can I just put something else on there to chase it up? No, I don't think so. I think I've done about as much as I can. Will that one go in that corner? Just to hide that little tiny weeny mark that's there. I think so. Here we go. Looks like my page is done. Let's move all these other clutter away so you can actually see what it looks like. And I'll put a nicer cover on there that contrasts with it and I'll be back. So there it is finished. So you have this little tag that comes out and goes back in that it can be written on when I get it back in does go in okay and then the whole envelope comes up and I can put some paper in there this side is a little booklet that opens up 
and you've got the paper in there that slides in and out to write on. You can add more paper, you can tuck something behind that paper. It all does up. With a two-way closure, there's a pocket behind and we've finished all the decoration on that. When I fold it in half, there's the, the whole page and then I fold it, I'll, I'll fold, show the other side and that's what that single page looks like. And on the back, remember that was what we did in another video. So that's with the tags and that with just with the, the with the card. And in fact, you could use this just as a little folder if you wanted to. So if you enjoyed this video and would like to join me on my wild adventures where nothing goes to plan, uh, please click the subscribe link below. Thank you.